What's going on guys? My name is Powerbang. Welcome back to the PUBG Mobile channel. Today I've got kind of an interesting video in store for you guys. I'm going to be walking through some higher level, more advanced strategies and give you some tips and tricks as I walk through a first person perspective solo game. We're going to be specifically analyzing the audio that goes along with these games and I'm going to show you why audio is about 90% of your eventual success or failure and why it's even more important than your visual cues. So first, we're going to pick a place to drop in. I choose Picado, which has got a beautiful arena. I really like to go to high population areas on uh, Miramar, not so much for the high pop area, but more because of the concentrated loot. And in the arena here in Picado, as well as in El Pozo and in El Hacienda in uh, the northern part of the map, those are really, really high concentrated areas. So as we drop in through the roof, unfortunately, we do take a little bit of damage and we are going to have to heal that up eventually. We see a parachute land outside to our left, and you can hear him running around right there. The ear icon on the screen is going to let you know that I do have audio cues uh, that you can hear. There he is outside. I know to peek. And wow, this guy is Lag City. Did you guys just see how Space Cadet that was? He was all over the place on that one, but we do get the kill. And we'll go ahead and take some time now to go ahead and put some painkillers up. We do hear a guy across the street as well. No, he's down below us. Taking a second to listen. And we hear him inside the arena. So we're going to try to approach him. It is first person perspective, so we can't peek him. So I decided to listen to his footsteps to get an idea of where he's going. Now, if you hear those hollowed out footsteps, you can actually tell that he's on the same floor as me, but I'm scanning all kinds of places in the arena. Ultimately, we do get the kill here. He pops out on the other side. We get the headshot. And one thing uh, specific to these arenas, both in El Pozo and here in uh, Picado, you can't just run up and vault on the run into the first level of these stadiums. You've got to stand completely still and then jump up. As you can see, I'm picking up different weapons. Even though I have the same weapon, uh, when you pick it up, you can actually take the ammunition out of the magazine and keep that. So it's a little bit of an ammo boost. I hear footsteps across the street, so I'm ready for a fight here as well. Pre-firing the window a little bit because I know the guy's over there. He, did, he is weakened, and unfortunately, I hit the center bar on the window here a couple times. Those seem to be the bane of my existence. And now I know it's time to pressure this guy because we've gotten three to four hits on him, so I know he's probably one shot from dying. And ultimately, I'm pushing, but kind of cautiously. And then I do see him here. I see that he's got no real weapon. Uh, so I just try to, I try to hit a jump shot, which is kind of ridiculous, but, you know, a little bit of a risk, but it was fun. Having some fun here with the game as well. So we get the kill. He's got a nice level 3 helmet for me and an AR suppressor, so I'm getting geared up uh, really, really nicely here. Still have a holographic sight on the M416, and I hear footsteps next to me as well, so I'm high alert here looking for this guy. Again, the audio lets me get off the first shot. I hear this guy off in the desert. He does hit me once, so I'll take this time to go ahead and heal up. Well, you know, instead of you doing the first aid, we'll just actually use a med kit here and get back completely to 100% health. Loot this guy, find out he's got a little bit of 762, and once that's done, we'll get on our uh, way here. We see the truck, and I want to get control of this truck early and kind of keep it, but I realize at the same time I have not yet cleared out the arena. I did hear some footsteps and bail early based to go chase those guys down. Uh, so I want to quickly uh, finish looting up, and I hear somebody in the arena on the other side, so we quickly take him out as well. And I don't figure there's going to be a ton of people in the arena because that's where I started and it was clear. But again, I hear a vehicle pull up on the other side of the building and stop somewhere on the east side. You can see he does take the motorcycle and again, hitting the pole here. Wasting precious shots on the pole. I have to reload and ultimately then we take out Alpha to get our sixth kill here in Picado. We're going to go loot up and see what this guy's got for us. Get the AR compensator, which is beautiful for that AK. And then it's all about uh, moving on and trying to clear the area. Again, we get inside and loot. And you hear the plane coming over. Now, if you take a listen here, you're going to hear a car at the same time. Right now. Shots being fired at the car. I strafe out to see what's up. And oh my gosh! Well, man, that was a close call. He came right at me. I did not think he'd be able to control the truck that well, but he did. 
and ultimately uh, we're gonna go loot him up as well and we do hear another motorcycle it pulls up and we're like oh my goodness another car is here and that means there's another guy nearby so there he is running across quickly take bang bang out with the headshot here awesome that is uh, good stuff here we'll loot him up as well get ourselves a tax stock at this point and now uh, so far, audio has really provided us the, you know, the whereabouts of our first several opponents, and we were able to get the jump on all of them, guys. And be getting the jump on your opponent is exactly what you're trying to do in almost all situations. This particular situation right here, I did not get the jump. I was completely surprised by that guy. I had a nice little spot in the door. I got some shots off on him. And again, I'm pushing pre-fire down in order to advance to this position where I know I can uh, have some cover and actually heal up. So I use a grenade to pressure him back from the window, and ultimately here, I'm gonna use the second med kit to quickly heal up back to 100% health. And I'm using my audio the whole time to track where this guy's at. The key to kind of locating footsteps, you see how I come out in my crosshairs right on him? You wanna make sure that the sound is balanced between your left and right earbud or headphone, whatever you're using. Throw a grenade back there, we don't uh, connect with it, that's okay though. But I hear him go all the way to the right right here. And I know that he's in the right and in the back. So at this point, I decide, you know what? He's giving me daylight to push in up the stairs. And he won't be able to get to the top here uh, before I can get there. So I pre-fire where I last heard him. He is there. We uh, peek out, get the nice kill there, the headshot. He's hiding behind the billiards table. Uh, but it's not going to matter. We, we take him out with a headshot, and he doesn't even get a shot off. So that was a really, really good job there. Here's a spot where I see a guy. It doesn't, uh, I, I get no audio keys from this, but, you know, at the same time, I'm able to quickly take this dude out. Uh, Drew Ben getting taken out with the headshot here. And then while we're looting him, we just kind of got to be aware that we are out of the circle. There is a guy coming out uh, in the field. He's trying to get to the safe zone here. I missed my initial shots on him. I went full auto, probably should have bursted a little bit better. But I decided to just step back with the SKS, put a couple shots in him, and he is down. Now, while sitting in here, again, audio cues, I hear footsteps to the right of me. And we're going to go ahead and take out this guy as well, George Mata, taken out with the 416. And as we're running to the buggy here, I get shot. I hear the shot go by, uh, but not before I get hit. So that's a little bit unfortunate. We'll take a quick second to heal, boost, and then we're going to go peek where that came from. And you see this guy up there, and boom, we do hit him. So I know that I've hit him. And in his mind, at this point, he's thinking as a sniper, oh crap, I don't know where this guy shot me from because you can see him running around not so scoping in on me. I don't know where he shot me from, but he obviously knows where I am and I'm also hurt. So I know that he's going to play passively, try to heal up here so I take the buggy on the offensive. Now as I'm coming up, key information here. I hear this guy in a firefight with another guy. The car 98 sound is what he is using. So I know I'm up against a sniper. He's using a car 98 and he's also being shot from the other side. So I want to play pretty aggressively and charge this guy while he's got action on both sides of him. I throw a grenade here and I'm going to continue to push up after this uh, happens. And there is more shots. I can tell this guy's off to the south here, trying to locate exactly where he's at. So after I kill this dude, who also has a silenced M4, it looks like. There he is. We take him out, and now I know exactly where the other guy is as well. He's going to be off to my south-southeast area, and now I'm scanning for him. Unfortunately, though, even though I know where he's at, he sees me first and gets the first shots off. So I have to play a little bit more passively, uh, peek and pop, and basically try to find him. He's off to the right right now. I can kind of see him in the replay. But at the time, I didn't. Once I see him, two shots off on him, and the red crosshair mark there, the hit marker, signifies a headshot. So I know this guy is very, very low on hit points, so I immediately go to the bike and try to press across this field. That was a significant gap. I do hear hit footsteps as I approach. And he actually runs away. So rather than run at me, he runs away, and now I hear a buggy. So that's telling me, okay, he's gone. He's going to try to get away, so I can push pretty aggressively here. There he is. And at this point, I know he didn't have time to heal when I got across that field, so I know he's super, super low, and I really just needed to land one shot. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it, but my crosshairs lead me right to another guy. Uh, Mr. Nobody standing there. I do headshot him with the SKS, but watch how close these shots are. Very, very long range, trying to land him. Two off to the right, three, four just off to the right. 
and I'm able to get very, very close, but no cigar. I don't get it, and now it's time to get to the zone as the blue zone has passed us, and we now need to work our way in. I see a truck, so I'm actually gonna crash this vehicle. Didn't mean to crash it, I didn't mean to stop. Uh, we hop in the truck, boost up real quick to make sure we're full boost, and then we're gonna actually highlight that right building there, and I don't wanna go to this building. I'm actually highlighting it so it's the rightmost uh, building in the zone. So I know if I go outside of this, I'll be uh, basically looking at everybody that could potentially have cover. As you approach, you hear the obvious head sh or the headshots, the uh, obvious gunshots off to the left. And now I know exactly where I want to park, which is just inside the zone. And real quickly here, before I get out, I actually switch seats to the passenger seat. So when you get out, you get out with uh, cover between you and the gunfire. So if you want cover, get out on the side where, you know, there is no people. So I look over to where I heard the gunshots. Sure enough, there's a guy right there. SKS, quick work of him. Somewhat is taken down with the headshot from the SKS. And at this point, I'll uh, hop back into the truck and move up a little bit further in the zone as I do see a guy sniping from the longhouse up there. I hit him once, he takes cover, and I do pre-fire a few times through the window just to try to get a lucky headshot in case he's running by uh, to get to cover. So he's not there, gonna hop in the truck, head to cover, and then ultimately try to uh, put some pressure on this guy and see where the next zone's gonna go. So we park in a position that is going to be shielded. Uh, the truck is kind of behind a berm from most of the zone, and I also want to use the truck itself as cover from the guy that is up in the longhouse. So we do get into a little skirmish here, and it's going to be interesting this fight because I'm trying to essentially do some damage to this guy to allow me to advance to the next position. I get a couple shots on him here with the SKS. I really don't know how I didn't get the headshot. Now I do get another headshot here after he's healed up and at this point I know it's time to go. I look at the zone and I'm gonna mark the back of this zone because I'm gonna drive all the way around. That's the perks of having a vehicle with you late in the game and when I drive there I'm not going to straight push the guy in the house. There are only six people left alive and the zone is fairly large right now. So I know if I drive around the edges the uh, odds of an encounter are fairly low but at the same time, if I do encounter somebody, they're going to be in front of me, and it's probably going to be just one. So I stopped at the very edge of the blue zone. This allows me to push in without having any worry of somebody coming in behind me, or really having to look in any other direction besides at the edge of the zone and straight ahead. So obviously some gunshots here, I can see they're positioned well inside the circle. So I know that there's at least a couple people kind of camped in there, uh, making sure that they've got really good position inside the circle. Now always when you're uh, playing like in game, if you can get to the circle first, you're in a much better position. And as you can see, uh, the circle has moved. I'm not in it, but I do see a motorcycle here by a shack and I thought, you know what? There might be a guy here, so I decide to try to nade through the window. I miss it, so instead I push, and I'm going to clear this so I don't get shot in the back on my way back, and I see here that there is no one uh, at home, so I'm now going to have to go back to the end circle, which is up the hill, and now I really don't know where anyone else is. There's four people alive besides myself, and again, I'm looking for uh, any audio cues, and I get them. Up the hill, I've got a, a Mini, an SKS, and a, a Car 98 uh, fight going on. So I'm gonna keep my ears open for these guys firing at each other. There's the Car 98. <clears throat> You've got the Mini across the way. The Mini gets the kill on somebody, and I see movement over there on the right side of the rock, so I'm gonna go back and pick up this kill. There he is. And again, I'm gonna line up the SKS shots and just take this guy out. I am suppressed, so he has a hard time telling where it's coming from. Uh, a couple more shots here, and we do get the kill. Down to two more people left besides myself, and I know one of them is the Car 98 guy right north of us here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a grenade, both as a little bit of pressure and also as a distraction as I push the top of this ridge. Zone is coming in, and I see a rock. That's going to be the spot that I'm gonna have to get to. I backtrack a little bit, waiting to get shot at here, and it never comes. So at this point, I'm pushing the rock for cover. I know that there's a guy very likely in these houses, so I wanted to kind of play it cool before I figure out where the third guy is. And so I start to peek, I see a vehicle, and I figure he's got to be close to that, and sure enough, catches my eye over here by the tire. And this guy is really, really, really good. He's moving well, uh, dodging well, and uh, I'm not able to land my shots. Right here, I hear footsteps to my left. Oh no, he's pushing me. I immediately pre-fire it. We do get the kill there. I didn't know how close he was to me, but it sounded awfully loud. Here's the difference in the game, though. 
slow motion for you guys. I peek out, put my crosshair on this guy, fire, misses ear, like it must have grazed his earlobe. A fire on the left side, graze the other earlobe. And then we fire again and uh, let's hit the rock. Oh yeah, bullet hole in the rock. And right there, he gets a couple shots off on me, and now I am on my heels, I'm on the defensive, and as luck would have it, I do not have the circle, he does. So he does not have to go far, so I know right now that I have to get some shots off on him here in order to get off this position and try to push towards this end circle. I'm gonna have to get the kill because there's no way I'm getting across this field. This guy moves too well, shoots too accurately, and I hear a bullet hit to my right here, so I thought he pushed to the right, uh, in order to flank me here, and so I peek out, and unfortunately I'm wrong, and I take key damage there that I could not afford to take, because as you see, the, the blue zone is coming in at this point, and I have less than half health. So I've got to use a first aid kit, and you can see the zone is coming. What does that mean? Well, I've got to go, and this guy is just waiting to pick me apart here. So I begin to bunny hop out of his uh, range. We do get out of range, and I'm going for a last ditch Hail Mary effort here. We come out, and for the first time, I have good shots to be able to put on him, but I am out of time. And sometimes, even though you use those audio cues to the best of your ability, you don't get lucky with the zone. And unfortunately, instead of him having to come to me, I had to go to him. So we ultimately play second in this one. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the tips. My name is Power Bang, and I'll see you next time.